partway through and uh, hand it to them. Yep, yep. And it's not like uh, it's not like they're horribly throwing it away. Like just they're just no, bad. No, they're just, just like these tiny little these tiny little uh, decision making quirks uh, mm-hmm. just build up and then they just built up into just trades going just just barely the wrong way for poor Tess. Yep, yeah, I definitely uh, didn't want to equate Tess with the Nest of Vipers performance from last week because that was on a whole different level. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, it just wasn't quite enough for Tess here. They are going to be losing this match on points, and that is time. And so that means TNT will continue to move on to face Ronin next weekend in the winner's bracket. Tess will move down into elimination bracket, though they're still in it in this tournament. And uh, we are going to be back very soon for what is probably the most anticipated match in this first half Uh the Camel Empire versus the 4th District, uh, two teams that we expect uh, to do some really fun things for us. So we'll be back after a few ads for that in just a moment.
is your f***ing primary! Rape is the f***ing primary! Everyone f***ing rape him now! Go for towers, free for all of towers. Welcome back, everyone, to this next match on day three of the 12th Alliance Tournament. This is CCB Fozzie, joined by Elise Randolph once again, and this is Camel Empire versus 4th District. Camel Empire, of course, a team that everyone is expecting to do very well in this tournament because they had a great showing as Thingy in the last New Eden Open. 4th uh, District with a huge tournament uh, history, um, and they are bringing something really outside the box from 4th. It's what I assume is a Tinker setup. Uh, Triple Proteus, Eos, Legion, Rapier, Double Tawar. Uh, so one of these Tech 3s is going to be the Repper most likely, and uh, I don't know how well it's going to work in practice, but it will be interesting to see. It is definitely an interesting setup. And meanwhile, uh, Camel have a, a double Claymore, double Gila core with some Damps and um, just a little Griffin just chilling by himself and some Heretics to kill Small Tackle. Uh, these Gila's and Claymores are hand fit, so they're going to want to go in all up in these guys' business. And the match has just started now. Yep, and we're seeing geckos and medium armor maintenance bots dropped by the uh, fourth team. So we're going to have to see whether that can apply much damage. Uh, Laddle and his uh, rapier is kind of moving forward a little bit. And uh, already a tower off the field from fourth. Yeah, no, this is not really good composure for these guys. These these towers aren't getting any reps at all. Maybe the, the repping uh, T3 is sort of separated, but... These ships themselves are actually pulling apart from one another, which is not really ideal or optimal. As those two towers are dead, now this rapier is taking a lot of damage from the camel, um, uh, camel deeps. I'm really not sure what this 4th District team is actually doing here. They spread out way too much for a normal uh, Tinker team. The uh, Rapier is now getting reps in, so the Legion is the repper for the team. The Rapier pulled back, but it doesn't look like... Oh, he's being saved right at the edge of structure in his low armor. But the rest of the team... not looking good, though. There he goes. The rest of the team is out of range of that uh, Legion, except for the Eos. The Proteus has moved up forward, and so did the Rapier, and that's why he wasn't getting reps. So in a Tinker team like this, when you have a Tech 3 as your only repper, the downside of the Tech 3 is it doesn't have a range bonus for its remote rep. You have to stay close to it. That's why the bumping was almost very effective uh, when Afterlife brought a Tech 3 uh, repper. But uh, I don't know what... The, these uh, fourth district guys are doing here actually yeah they are, they are definitely way outside the box this is some new meta stuff going on that we're seeing firsthand unfortunately for them they i guess they didn't want to see this type of team because it's it's not working at all yeah um, alexander's uh proteus still not getting any reps so it's taking damage uh but it's out of range of the legion and so it just might as well not have any remote repairs on the team legion is now charging in at the blistering speed of 300 meters a second to save his Proteus friend. But his Proteus is... Alexander is, is, is not really gonna no. do too well here. I mean, Meanwhile, the Camel team hasn't taken any damage on any of their ships. They've got like 5% of, of shield damage on one of their healers, and their Griffin took like a, a, just a stray shot once a couple minutes ago. Yeah, it looks like so. The drones are sitting on uh, Zebos's Gila, uh, but he's actually just moving fast enough that he's evading a lot of the damage, and the uh, rep drones on him are pretty much able to keep him alive. The scimitar isn't even having to bother. Yep, uh, so Draenar in the uh, camel scimitar just came in, just pick up some loot or something, and uh, the Eos was able to get some geckos on him, but he's he's got armor or shield maintenance bots on him, so he'll be fine. He's pulling a little bit of range now. The hubris is out of his system. And now another Proteus is about to die and still doesn't have any reps on it. Uh, I mm. I have to imagine that maybe this was a collective mistake, that the, there was miscommunication about whether the team would move forward as a group or stay back, um, and that the Proteuses and the Rapier and the Talwars all moved forward while the Legion and the Eos stayed behind. But uh, that's a really, really painful mistake to make when you're in a Tinker team like this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, in, when you're playing in a match, like if you're just watching, you're saying, oh, it's no big deal. I can easily say, you can say, which one you should shoot but when you're actually in the thick of things 
sometimes you double click in space. Sometimes you just don't think about where your ship is going for, for a couple seconds. And then especially with a tinker team like this, an armor tinker, you, you can't just make those mistakes. Like mm -hmm. it means you're dead. And this Legion <laughs> wasn't even going to tank anything anyways. So even if there they all stayed together, at least they have that going for them. They would have died anyways. I love to say I'm going to be fascinated to see the fits on these uh, Tech 3 cruisers. Uh, the Proteuses are using 250mm rails uh, as well as the drones. Um, so they're not going to be tracking great up close, but they can apply damage pretty far. Um, so it'll be fun to see the uh, kill boards afterwards, but it is only now a matter of time. Camel Empire is going to mop uh, the rest of these two ships up and uh, we'll get a uh, probably total hell death win. Yeah, most certainly, and it's gonna be, it's gonna come in the next couple seconds here. Maybe it'll be delayed a little bit. I see some camel guys throwing out some cap charges and superfluous ammo just to, to loot the rest of the field. Maybe they're also really interested at in what these fits were, because yeah. it's definitely some outside of the box new meta stuff. But yep. uh, fourth district are gonna have to to shake this one off and and just kind of regroup for next week. They're not totally eliminated. They yeah. have got a, at least a week left in them. They they play. Where they play next week. The winner of our next match they play, or the loser of our next match they play next week, right? Um, actually, no, they're going to play the winner of one of the matches from tomorrow. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so um, it'll be, we don't know, we're not going to know until tomorrow who they're going to face, but uh, they will be in the elimination brackets next weekend. They're going to be up against the wall. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, this is a team with a lot of tournament experience, so they might be a pretty dangerous one in the loser's bracket, but obviously not dangerous enough to knock Camel Empire down. Camel Empire uh, with another very uh, dominating showing in this match and they'll yeah, be the clean the sweeps week. and clean uh, sweep. yes with that we're going to send you to some ads and be right back very soon for mif versus sleeper social club
Hello once again, space friends. This is our next match of the 12th Alliance Tournament, MIF versus Sleeper Social Club. And uh, we've got another great one for you. MIF bringing double Slepnir, Basilisk, triple Gila, triple Worm, Stiletto, double Merlin, and uh, Sleeper Social Club with uh, lots of drones, Stratus and Eoses. Yeah, absolutely. The, the Sleeper Social Club team, they both came in at pretty much max range, and the beacons they chose means they are as far Just away from one another as they possibly can be. So there's going to... I guess both teams wanted this, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do given um, the positioning they both have. Uh, yep. The Sleeper Social team's got a bunch of Stratioses uh, supported by the Ishkurs, so they'll be probably a little bit faster because uh, these Merlins, I assume the MIF Merlins aren't tackle Merlins, they're just kind of like utility Merlins. But the match starts now, so we'll know for sure in a second. Yep. Drones uh, launched. Couple of dams going thrown. across the field. Yeah, and uh, so it's worth noting, MIF banned out Balgorn and Armageddon, so they obviously were very uh, averse to facing lots of nuding in this fight, so we'll have to see whether that uh, plays into their fits at all. But their Slepnirs are slowly moving across the field to uh, get on top of Sleeper Social Club. Yeah, the MIF team is just lumbering about. No, no team actually making any big movements. You see some drones going out. There are some uh, Sleeper Social Club geckos. Just kind of chilling in the center of the arena, just slowly going towards their target right now. It looks like they're going to be trying to shoot a Slepnir, because that's all they can hit. Yeah, the SSC Ares is moving across the field. Looks like he's going to try to get tackle. He's almost on top of the Slepnirs. The rest of the team is well behind, though. So if there's if they can switch the damp over to the Aneros, they can probably kill the uh, Ares very easily. Yes, and well, let's see what's going on. And it's on. drones. It's They're shooting cool. drones. So right now, the entire MIF team is focusing on the geckos and augmented hammerheads that are moving across the field. And I just saw a gecko explode. So uh, that's going to really hurt. These uh, Eoses don't, and Stratios especially, don't have unlimited uh, drone base. So uh, if they can knock out the waves of drones, it's going to really help them later in the fight. That is definitely one thing that we see. We have yet to see really organized uh, in any sort of aspects right now is. Uh, the the drones that actually move around, you can kill them. Like drones are a damage type, they're great because you could throw them onto people. But they're the only damage type in even, at least in the tournament setting, that you can completely destroy. Like you can't destroy the other guy's guns. You can try and damp them or tracking disrupt them, but these things are gone forever once uh, the drones are dead. And in what may be a bad side.